peeps welcome to another vlog the problem is over time what you're going to notice is the air quality inside the truck starts getting worse and worse because you are typically going out to a lot of dusty environments and you're bringing that dust in unbeknownst to you so every once in a while i look at the truck and i go where did all this dust come from and it's been like that for a while so what ends up happening is you end up accidentally kicking up some dust you're breathing that in all the time so you have to make sure that you from time to time open the truck up and vacuum it up and get all that dust out of here because it's something that you're going to be ingesting over the duration of your career the other thing that you probably noticed is i got myself a couple of very fresh new drop sheets the other ones i had about three or four were looking super gnarly it's at that point where they're actually counterproductive they're actually so dirty that you're worried about bringing them into the job site so that's one thing that i had to swap out it was absolutely necessary so peeps today we are running out we're going to be doing a bunch of valves i know you've seen a hundred thousand valves on this channel but that is something that is kind of our bread and butter we do work in a lot of high rises that have a lot of units and especially if they're aging buildings we have to come in and replace valves quite often especially in buildings that haven't been maintained as best as they can be do me a favor if you're new to the channel please hit that subscribe button down below hit that bell notification you'll know exactly when we are uploading to the channel that way you can get the content right away we are doing our best to get to 10,000 subscribers this year in 2021 so please help us out it'd be awesome for the community and to be able to hit that milestone also if you like videos like this hit that thumbs up button Let's get to work. Let's have some fun. Oh, and by the way, peeps, you know what to do, baby. Let's go do some delicious plumbing. So peeps, the first thing that needs to be said about replacing valves is preparation is going to be your best friend. There's nothing nonchalant about replacing valves and the moments I haven't been extremely deliberate about my actions, I paid the price in time and frustration. Here's the lowdown. I spent exorbitant amounts of time cleaning pipe and fittings. And the reason why I show you this in my videos is to remind you all that this is one of the main steps for soldering to go smoothly. The hardest places to clean are the areas of the pipe you can't physically see because you can't verify if it's clean or not and that area will almost always be the culprit for unsound soldering so pay extra attention to those areas with your grit cloth and if you have to get a small mirror verify that the pipe is clean if you're not sure and if you ever see your solder ball up and drip without going into the fitting while you're soldering most likely you have an area that is not clean not pasted or worse both do yourself a favor take the fitting out right away and start again by cleaning everything thoroughly you're gonna see me later on soak my glove in water and place it onto a fitting that i'm not trying to heat up this is an old school trick that protects the fitting from heating up when it's close to another fitting i'm hoping to solder but upon review i came to realize that the map gas is not the right tool for the job because it puts a lot of fittings at risk this is purely based on the tip of the torch and the problem i ran into is that the map gas's tip didn't have enough angle to heat the fitting i was aiming for so I swapped it out with my B-Tank to get a better angle on the fitting, which eliminates the need for the wet glove. But I hope it's useful information for you. That way, if you ever have the situation occur on the job site, you might have a way of protecting a fitting you don't want to heat up.
So peeps, a couple of things to note here. I always attempt to take the bonnets or cartridges out of the old valves when feasible. When I sweat out a valve and it's open and dry, it allows steam to escape and it's a faster process altogether. It also avoids the smell and all the chemicals released when burning rubber. Once you remove the valve, it's imperative to clean the old solder off the remaining pipes. This is why when I wear gloves that have rubber grip on them, like these ones do, I wear them upside down. I don't want the rubber to melt off my glove when cleaning the solder. Once all this is done, the measuring, cutting, and cleaning begins. Lastly, whenever I solder a ball valve, you'll see me solder it when they are in the half open or half closed position. The reason why I do this is because I've been taught that it's possible to solder these permanently in the open or closed position. If too much solder is administered, it can creep through and solder the ball on the inside. By keeping it half open or half closed, you can still maneuver the ball on the inside of the valve and break off any solder that may have come through. It's also important to note that you can overheat these valves to the point where their internal mechanisms melt, which turns a ball valve into a very expensive coupling. Because you can neither open nor close this valve now, it stays in the position that it was soldered in. So make sure all the variables are set in your favor and do everything in your power not to overheat these valves.
Alrighty, so I just want to end this off by saying a couple of things. The first job that you saw of the valves took forever because of that small little access door that we had. That small little access door and the inability to open it up made that job significantly three or four times more difficult because now I have to work within an allotted space. The second job, I have the opportunity to open up that hole larger, which will have to be fixed later, yes, but by opening it up larger, I also have different different options in ways of running the pipes and also of which tools I can use. So in the first application, I had to switch out to my B-Tank because I couldn't use the map gas anymore. The angle that I have on the map gas is not a large enough angle in order for me to get the appropriate angle to solder the valve itself without affecting anything else like the riser T. So space is a really big deal when it comes down to plumbing and you're going to notice that if you're going to be cutting a hole in a lot of circumstances you might as well cut it a little bit larger. The drywaller's got to come in anyways now don't be a fruit ninja and just start cutting everything but what i'm saying is is that if the drywaller is coming in you might as well make it accessible for you so that the job can be easier it's going to be better for everybody if you're there less hours they're going to be happy that's the whole point the second job compared to the first one was an absolute dream even though it had its own obstacles but was way easier than the first job so Peeps, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down below if you like videos like this. Hit that bell notification so you know exactly when we're uploading videos. We are doing our best to get to 10K subscribers this year. That is the goal for the channel. So let's do our best to get there. That's much appreciated. Hit that thumbs up button and I'll see you plumbers very soon. Kenny Molotov, guys. Peace, baby.